thank you for the introduction and thanks for this opportunity uh, at the conference. Uh, slight correction, I'm not an expert in chemistry, so I have my cheat sheet here. I uh, work in the area of power electronics. The topic given to me was to speak about the potential of uh, solid state batteries. Uh, I'm happy to you know, speak about it. Uh, my name is Raghu, I'm the co-founder and CEO at RC Labs. Uh, we design and manufacture uh, intelligent battery management systems that are adaptive, chemistry agnostic, and modular for both electric mobility and stationary storage applications. To date, we've done uh, voltage applications ranging from 36 volt to 240 volt, and are working on an 800 volt platform as well. Uh, please bear with me, I, don't ha I, I can't control this. I can? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so let's look into the, the market, right? Market for electric mobility alone. So when we, when we kind of uh, look at the market growth, we are looking at close to 15% CAGR for the next maybe 20 years. And then by 2030, the market size is going to be about $951 billion. Uh, however, uh, for it to grow faster and for better technology uh, to be you know, used in the market, uh, the key drivers include environmental challenges. We need better efficient batteries. Uh, higher efficient batteries, as well as batteries which are safe to use, right? Certain chemistries can actually catch fire and we don't want to see all those hazards moving forward. Now, when we actually started with electric mobility, maybe like uh, 10 years ago, uh, we all remember how uh, the Reva Electric, right? It, it kind of used uh, lead acid batteries. Uh, but then these batteries are, uh, you know, really heavy and bulky and because of this your uh, energy density is lower, uh, your power density is not too high as well. So we looked for a better alternate chemistry. Uh, not to mention that they also had some maintenance, right? You have to add distilled water uh, after a period and so on. So then came our uh, lithium based batteries, right? Uh, like uh, Mr. Rajaraman just spoke about it. There are various aspects to it, different types of batteries available in the market today. And we will see more and more chemistries coming in uh, over the next uh, one to two decades. So, what differentiates lithium batteries uh, when compared to lead acids is that first, they have really high energy density compared to lead acid chemistries, uh, definitely higher power density longer range, it, it, therefore it can hop, offer longer range and you can kind of charge it quickly as well compared to lead acid batteries. In addition to that, there is no need to kind of uh, have this maintenance where you kind of, uh, you know, p uh, pour into the, pour, you know, uh, water like uh, distilled water, etc. Uh, however, uh, lithium batteries, right, they, they, do, they do need a really expensive battery management systems because of the inherent uh, challenges they pose in terms of management and aging, etc. Now, keeping this in mind, uh, there are a lot of chemistries. Uh, so let's, let's, let's talk in detail about these limitations, right? First of all, certain chemistries uh, in the lithium uh, battery space are more prone to fire accidents, predominantly NMC and NCA, right? And when you, tip, when you compare it to supercapacitors or if you compare it to LTO chemistries, NMC and LFP actually have a slightly lower cycle life, maybe uh, 3,000 cycles. That's the standard for LFP today. Charging rate, you definitely want uh, faster charging. Obviously, some, some companies are doing it, like with active cooling, whether it's immersion cooling or if you're pumping in uh, you know, a coolant to kind of maintain the battery temperature. Uh, but however, standard uh, charging is still slow, and it is still really uh, not you know, in an ideal case. Next is energy density. So energy density ideally, can, it, it, it translates to your range, right? So higher the energy density for your battery, uh, higher is going to be uh, your range. And uh, you, you typically want an electric vehicle where you charge once and probably travel for maybe like 500, 600 kilometers on a single charge. And even if the charging is actually you know, less than 15 minutes, right? That's like kind of an ideal battery. Uh, so we are looking at a battery pack which can give you longer range as well as quick charging time. Lithium batteries are also, they have a specific temperature range in which they perform optimally, and therefore that is also a kind of limitation. So you typically want to have a battery pack which can work in different geographies and not be restricted to a particular temperature range, right? So that gives the manufacturers flexibility to, you know, kind of scale up and move forward. Recycling too is a challenge. Now, because of all these, uh, you know, inherent uh, limitations, a typical lithium battery 
will always require an intelligent BMS to handhold the battery from the day it is being manufactured, maybe five years down the line to the day where it is being used for a second life application, and also further down the line, maybe like 10 years down the line where you have to recycle the pack or the cells. So that is where we come in. I'll quickly jump through this. So the problem in today's market is uh, BMS has suboptimal algorithms. It's because most of the cells and BMSs are imported from overseas and are assembled here. It directly leads to 30% reduction in battery life. We also uh, frequently hear complaints of shorter driving range uh, because of these suboptimal algorithms. And we see multiple system failures as well as fire accidents too. The second is if you're manufacturing packs in India, uh, you're not just catering to one single segment. Uh, you're actually catering to a wide variety of segments from two wheelers, three wheelers, bicycles, drones, large scale energy storage, you know, uh, farm equipment, tractors, et cetera, et cetera. So for all these equipment, uh, instead of importing, you know, from different players, which kind of messes up your supply chain uh, from China, actually uh, uh, at RC Labs, we are able to provide a modular design, which can cater to a wide Yeah. So, okay. So uh, this, is, this is what we do, right? We have a modular design. So we have a master slave kind of an architecture. Currently our master is about uh, 48 volts and can go up to 60 volt. And we can physically scale the battery management system design and help our customers to scale up to as high as 800 volts without a problem. So we have done projects between 36 to uh, 800 volts and everything in between for various applications. Now, let us look at the difference between a lithium ion battery and a solid state battery, right? So wh why we need is because there are a lot of limitations to uh, a traditional lithium ion battery, which typically has a liquid electrolyte. But when we come to a uh, solid state battery pack, right? So what typically changes is that the electrolyte is no longer liquid. It is actually solid. So the one which is popular is a lithium sulfur based, you know, uh, technology, which is which has a specific capacity 10 times that of lithium cobalt. So if that is, <coughs> so that is actually, actually very exciting and there are a number of companies, including Toyota, who've promised a lot of uh, better things, right? Like for example, 25% more energy density, 20% uh, more power density, and Toyota recently claimed that they can charge uh, a battery pack for a, a four-wheeler less than 10 minutes without any active cooling technique involved with solid state batteries. So that will be in production by 2027, 2028. So keeping this in mind, <coughs> there are a lot of positive things coming forward. <coughs> so how are solid state batteries better? First is because of solid state electrolytes, they actually don't catch fire that easily or they don't catch fire at all. Second, for the same reason, they typically have double the cycle life at least, right? Most of the companies claim that, like QuantumScape, Toyota, Samsung, etc. Charging rate is also typically high. Uh, Toyota claims they can charge a four-wheeler in less than 10 minutes, actually. Energy density is at least 25% higher from QuantumScape, so that is also an exciting thing. Because of the solid electrolytes, the temperature sensitivity, right, is actually quite better, so there's no need uh, there, no, there, there, there is a need for a BMS, but the operating range and sensitivity can be actually adjusted and is in fact better compared to uh, the traditional lithium batteries. <coughs> and because of this, uh, we expect EVs to definitely be more safer, uh, even if you're using uh, traditional chemistries with MMC, etc. Uh, cycle life is definitely going to be higher as well because of solid state electrolytes. Charging rate will actually give us you can charge your vehicles within 10 minutes. If it, if it actually happens, then that is going to be a really a game changing technology with, <clears throat> without any active cooling involved. Energy density is also 20, 25% high, as I told you before. This is both from QuantumScape as well as from Samsung. And improved better, and improved temperature sensitivity as well. So these are the different companies which operate in the space. Uh, the ones in news frequently include Samsung, uh, Toyota and quantum skip. <coughs> there are a lot of, I have it here, thank you. <coughs> so definitely there are challenges to um, solid state batteries, right? One is 
the mechanical stress and therefore the challenges <coughs> in manufacturing. And uh, obviously we are very, very early when it comes to scaling and cost. Therefore, currently they are at least three to four times more expensive uh, per pack. So this is the data from the internet. So for us to actually overcome all these, we have to have a lot of technology and companies kind of collaborating and moving forward. Thank you.